you have a, just a, a wonderful way of, um, and a wonderful experience, I think, of just experiencing direction with young people, yourself, watching it happen with older people, mm -hmm. older people with younger people, yeah. and to see this tremendous mix of, of people who are looking for something more. Mm -hmm. Can you, is, is there any way to find words that can express maybe what you sense is the hunger of the, of the people that, the younger people that you're working with? And Especially in the context of, of the, um, you know, the young people and the older people, what I've discovered is, you know, all of us are journeying and in some ways the questions that we ask whether we're 20 or 70 or, you know, 40 are similar. You know, it always has a different face. But I think um, especially for the young people, you know, when they come in, um, they might not even use explicitly God language because a lot of what they're putting their energy into is who does God want me to be? You know, and so I can't, I'm not really focused a lot on on naming God or talking a lot to God, but just receiving, you know, input about who God wants me to be. And so I think especially in those younger years, someone might be looking for like the big life questions. Um, who am I? What am I going to do with my life? How am I going to serve people? Could you tell me, how did you come to find out about spiritual direction or even become introduced to the ministry of spiritual direction? When I was a sophomore in college, my friends deemed me the oral processor of our group. We have five other women, and I was the one that was constantly talking and, and kind of attending to group dynamics. And I think that uh, in some ways what, I, what was really helpful about the sessions was that some one person sat and listened to me talk for a whole hour. <laughs> um, college is certainly a time where, uh, if you allow it to, your whole worldview can get um, turned upside down. And so I think I needed a lot of one-to-one uh, -one time just to sort some of those things out. And so, um, again, that value of just being listened to, um, especially during that tumultuous time when my ideas about how the world worked and how spirituality was going to fit into all of that was was um, very shaky. So having someone just to sit there and listen was, was um, beneficial. I mean, it, it gave me air time, I guess, is really <laughs> what it came down to, at least at that point. Yeah. So the value of being able to be listened to so yeah. attentively, but you said it kind of helped uh, reorient a world that had been turned upside down? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it, when, I, when I was a sophomore in college, the um, kind of cognitive understanding of theology started um, kind of usurping my um, experiences of God. And so during those times when the old God images weren't working for me and, and sort of, you know, somebody telling you that you are allowed to think of God in a different way. In my head, it was like I needed the experiential part of it to, to catch up to. And so getting to sit with someone in outside of a classroom setting, for example, and talk about, well, what's going on in my real life, not just in the things that I'm thinking about. Um, it was, it was, it was, and certainly I didn't get it all put together <laughs> within those couple of years, but just to, to begin unpacking some of those things was immensely helpful. How do you prepare yourself for those sessions when you meet with a student? I, I did spend a lot of time when I was first um, beginning to work with students um, thinking about actually one of the thinking about what they need um, you know I, I'm, I'm familiar with some faith development models and and one of my practicum directees actually when I was doing my study at Creighton um, came in and he was I think a sophomore, um, and his mom is a spiritual director, so I'm thinking, oh gosh, what am I going to do here? here I'm, you know, I'm just beginning, and this, this, this man's mom is a spiritual director. And, but he offered me one of the best images that I've ever, and I've repeated over and over again. Um, and what he talked to me about was, with his experience with his mom, is that she served as like a trestle, where you had a, a framework of, you know, some things to kind of hang your hat on or to grab onto, but with lots of spaces mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, and he talked about how that, that was what he really needed was a little bit of a framework, but not to be suffocated by, you know, being told everything either. And, and so what I discovered for the students was that um, creating even just a one-page handout where I could tell them the kinds of things that they might talk about. And it was this big, long list, you know, of anything from memories to dreams to big decisions that you're thinking about to prayer. and. Um, but to name it explicitly like that in almost bulleted points, I think, helped them to feel at the beginning of the relationship that, that they would be able to 
enter into it and, and know what to do with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that has been helpful for most of them to have some concrete suggestions. When these, when these young men and women, men and women, yep, yep. Um, come to you, how do you, are they, are they coming to look for a spiritual director? Is that what they're, have they been told, go find a spiritual director? Or how do you describe what that process is about? Do you describe that you have a wonderful sheet that gives them some guide <laughs> questions? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, in the context of, of the um, Catholic University that I work at, especially with theology majors, um, to some degree some of them will have had at least some idea of what spiritual direction is as a ministry. Um, so then when it comes to telling them how it works, I, I don't have to describe so much what happens, like, well, you, whereas with a brand new person who's never heard of spiritual direction, it, I might keep it much more big picture oriented, like um, a spiritual director is someone like a guide or a mentor who sits with you, um, listens to you as you talk about your daily life experience through the lens of the sacred, as you talk about maybe big decisions that are going on in your life, um, basically someone to, to be with you in that. Um, whereas with the students um, that are somewhat familiar with it, I might go a little further and explain to them maybe more particularities of what my approach will be like. Um, some of them might expect a director to be someone that's going to come in and tell them what to do, you know, and so I have to be very explicit about saying, I use a contemplative evocative approach, you know, and they're like, what the heck does that mean? And so I have to say, you know, I'm not going to be telling you what to do. Um, you know, I'll be asking you questions to, to sort of empower you to sort through those things yourself. And um, I'll give you some suggestions, you know, and things to, to sort of start with. But, um, you know, even the idea that, that most of the time they're going to be talking during, during the hour as opposed to me doing talking. Now that you've had some distance from those years and some yeah. uh, broader experience of the ministry of direction, did you ever experience where direction itself itself turned your world upside down? I think in some ways, yes. It's It hasn't been as um, hmm, tumultuous in the last couple of years, but one of the things that's happening to me as a young lay woman in the Catholic Church is that I'm discovering um, myself more and more as a gendered person in my community and <clears throat> the fact that um, some of the things that I'm feeling called to as far as ministry goes aren't available to me in the sense of um, public um, facilitation of worship and whatnot. Uh, this, the, 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 the idea of spiritual direction as a prophetic ministry is really um, meaningful to me right now because I, I do feel like in some ways I'm kind of on the prophetic edges of some things and, and even just yesterday in our institute we talked about spiritual direction as um, as a prophetic sort of subversive ministry within within the church and um, <clears throat> one of the one of the kind of clear connections that I made for example was I got to take a homiletics course you mm -hmm. know which is typically in the Catholic Church reserved for those who are going to be preaching in front of um, congregations and um, William Skidlarik, who actually got to help write kind of the Catholic document about preaching that came out um, recently, uh, talked about how the preacher is kind of given the role of helping to make God's implicit presence in the scripture and in the people more explicit. And when he said that, I was like, that's what I'm doing in spiritual direction, you know, and so to see um, that identity as, as someone who's called to help others make God's implicit present, not make it, but, but to help draw forth the implicit present in an explicit way. Um, I think spiritual direction, as opposed to ministry as, as an ordained person, is, is, has sort of flipped my world upside down because it has given me a place where I can do what I feel like I'm called to do.